Let's look at a recap of our Belleville events. Now that we have seen a recap, let's look at some of our matches. Got a thumbs up, drivers behind the line in three, two, one, go. And it's the beginning of the autonomous period and qualification match number four here at BYC Field in Belleville, Michigan. We have one of our blue robots working, one of our red robots working. As we move into the teleoperated period with a score of blue 10 and red 7. Fighting Irish working to score in the blue community. They're moving back out to try to grab some of that free stuff out in the middle of the field. As the Mechanum Knights catch themselves with their arm and right the robot. Still in the process of grabbing some game pieces. 88.95, that's the Red Wolf Robotics. Working at collecting some of those free game pieces out in the middle of the field as the Biting Irish grab a game piece, they shoot and score low over on the Blue Community and go back into the middle of the field to grab some more. 88-95 playing a little defense here for the Red Alliance. As we approach the 72nd, the 72nd mark. That means there's 70 seconds left. And Blue is still out to a bit of a lead. Sixty-five, thirty-eight, saving up a little battery power. Hopefully, if I, for end game, they can get that one going. As some of our robots are um, showing off some of their tipping and tilting skills, as we get close to our end game period here in match number four. Technicians got a little hung up on one of their opponents over here in the blue community. And the whistle means it's end game. We got two blue robots working to get up on the station and let's see if they can get engaged. 240, that's Tempest over and across the field. We've got two blue robots up and engaged. And we will see the official scores for this match. With a score of 90 to 33, Blue Alliance taking home two ranking points. All right, let's meet the... Now let's look at the semifinal. Yacht Club Field in three, two, one, go. Oh, this is a good one, folks. We're starting things off over on our Blue Alliance side. We've got 66 shooting and almost getting a score, but we have their Alliance partners, the Torque Bots, getting a score themselves. We've got both Alliances going for an engage. 
Both alliances are up and engaged here in match number two of your playoffs. Step up and drive, it's Rapid React, presented by Haas. We've got 5090, that's the Torque Bots, or the Torque Nados. They are scoring for five points by placing that cube in that upper node. Their opponent, 7174, Charger Robotics. Those are your Alliance Four captains placing a cone up on that upper level. 34 to 42 right now, it is anyone's game with 100 seconds to go. We're seeing cones go flying. Blue Alliance already getting together a link. Reminder, links don't earn you ranking points, but they do earn you those five bonus points per shot. 5090 placing yet another cone. Their alliance partners, 94, the Techno Jays. They're grabbing more. Over on our red side, we've got two li links being completed by 3656 and 7174. That Dexter team, those Dreadbots, they're grabbing a cube from their substation. They want to put it somewhere. Where will they put it? We've got one minute left to play. Last minute of play here in playoff matches number two. We've got cubes flying on the Red Alliance side. We've got cubes flying on our Blue Alliance side. 95 to 81, still anyone's game. Three links apiece, teams. Three links apiece. We've got some cones headed up on your Red Alliance side. We've got some cubes being placed for your Blue Alliance side. Just as we enter our end game, a lovely train whistle. We might, we're seeing two robots get set to climb and engage. We've got two up for red. We've got 94 on blue. They're looking to get up as well. Dexter Dreadbots, 3656, looking to score some final game pieces. They're parked. 10 seconds left, 9466. 50 years of FRC experience. They're going for the triple. They're going for the triple. Three, two, one. Unfortunate. By a score of 112 to 129, your Red Alliance walks away with the win. They will go up into that upper bracket, match number seven. Alliance number five, you're not out yet. You're heading down to that lower bracket, match number five. Now let's look at match nine. Drivers behind the lines in three, two, one, go. It's the autonomous period on Lily's Belleville Yacht Club Field for match number nine. We've got one blue robot up and engaged, one red robot up and engaged. As we go into the tele-operated period with a score, Blues up by three, 33 to 30. Adam's family with that machine they call The Thing, working on picking up some of those free game pieces out in the middle of the playing field as Charge Robotics grabs a cone up over the charge station. They're working at scoring up high, and they do. Dreadbots moves across the field, picks up another f cone as they move into the red community to score. The next express moving across the field to add some score for blue. We've got one link already on red. Blue still working on their first one. Charger Robotics grabbing one of the last free pieces off the field. They try to go over the charge station. Slows them down a little, but they are shooting high, and they score again. As do the Mechanum Knights over in the Red community. We got about a minute left in this one. A minute left. Red's out to an 80-67 lead, but this is still anyone's match. We're going to see what happens here. Next Express has a Cuban procession across the charging station. They are shooting medium. They score. 
Meanwhile, Charger Robotics taps the Atama. The Gator Bots and as they attempt to get into the blue community. Got less than 20 seconds left. 102 to 77, looks like it might be Red's match. Let's see who can balance up on this one. We got three blue robots up and they are engaged. We got one red robot on the station and we'll see the official score short with a score of 112 to 107. So let's give a big shout out to our Blue Alliance. 4405, the Adams family. 4737, the... Now let's look at the interviews and see how the kids are feeling. I'm Kaylee Crumpley. And I'm Luke Vanderhavel. What are some of the differences between Kettering and Belleville? So some of the differences that we encountered were, um, first of all, Belleville was not run as well, which isn't that big of a deal. And the main thing was it was completely different teams, which we were we were prepared for, but we just didn't know how good some of the other teams were going to be. And it kind of caught us off guard. We got some pretty bad alliances the first day that we did not mesh well with and did not do what they told us they were going to do. So our ranking was not as great at Ketter or at Belleville compared to Kettering, but we ended up getting picked to a good alliance and we made a good run like Kettering. Not quite as far, but it was still good. Okay, so Belleville is the second competition. How did you feel that we got fourth in the finals? Um, I was a little disappointed we didn't go a little further. But like I said, I was happy to be selected. I was a little worried there for a minute that we weren't going to be there going to the radar, but um, I was happy to get selected. We had good teams to work with. Um, and we put up a good fight in every match we played in, including the ones we lost. So I was pretty happy about it. Do you have any specific things we think we should fix before states? Uh, one thing we're working on right now that I think will be much better going into states will be our Auton. We're trying to place pieces in our Auton and then move out compared to not placing pieces and moving out. Other than that, just kind of stability things, make sure the robot's good to go. One thing our robot's better at than others is being sturdy. And that's kind of held up, and we're going to double check that, make sure it's good to go. We're going to rewire some stuff so some wires and can bus doesn't fall out. Um, but other than that, nothing crazy major. All right, thank you. I'm Kaylee Crumpley. I'm Bailey McCroby. What are some of the differences between Kettering and Belleville? I think one of the main differences is the energy and the teams and the types of robots that are on the fields because it is a later week in our build season. So there are more advanced robots and everyone is kind of getting the hang of what their robot can do and they're really pushing themselves to their limits. How did you feel about getting fourth place at Belleville? I feel like for a second competition, it was perfect. I mean, we pushed ourselves and got as many cycles on the field as we possibly could have and we even ended up climbing multiple times which was a lot better than Kettering so I feel pretty good about it. Do you have anything you think we should modify or fix before states? I think that we should um, fix our Auton a little bit and I know that we're doing that right now and we're hopefully gonna get a couple game pieces scored and then quite possibly if we can get it working well enough have a balanced auton on the charge station. All right, thank you. I'm Ash, and this is? Jay. So, what are some of the differences between Belleville and Kettering? Uh, Belleville's a lot more confusing with all with everywhere to go. Um, and that's the main thing I can think about. It's a lot more confusing. Uh... I, for other than that, all the other experiences are the same. There are definitely a lot different variety of teams at Belleville, but besides those two factors, nothing much. And um, how do you feel about getting fourth during competition? Honestly, can't expect us to being from being in um, the semifinals or 
whatever you call it, in one competition to once again being in the semifinals again in another competition. Honestly, it was it was really cool being able to be in the semifinals two times back to back. And what do you think that we could do for like fixes before states? Uh well, just changing up the auton a little bit. I mean, after all, at our auton for there was literally just backing out the station. Now we're working on like placing a cu a cube and then backing out, and we are potentially working on a bounce auton. All right. What's your name? Uh, my name is Benjamin O'Donnell. All right, what are some of the differences you noticed between Belleville and Kettering? Uh, Belleville was a lot larger than Kettering. That's, yeah, definitely. And um, how do you feel about getting to fourth place? I actually feel extremely good about that. Um, I'm Kaylee. And I'm Ash. What are some of the differences you noticed between Kettering and Belleville? Well, I can tell that Kettering is, like, Kettering seems a lot more put together, like it had more, like they had more time, and Belleville, it just didn't seem, like, you know, cohesive. There was a lot of, like, empty space that could have been used for other things. It just, it was really different, though, and I really enjoyed going somewhere new. But how did it feel for you? I guess, like, it, they say it was a little more stretched out. It honestly felt like there was the same amount of space, in my opinion. But the matter of it not being, like, as compact as in, like, one big area versus having it in smaller areas but still compact, you didn't exactly know how much time you had to do certain things. Like, if you had to run to, like, the table to go grab, like, water or a snack like, or something, like, you didn't have time to run to the stands, but you had time to do that, it's harder to know where you, how much time you had before your next match, especially for, like, me being on drive team. I was always, in, uh, had some, a little bit of anxiety behind making sure I made it to the matches. Mm. Okay. Oh, for the second competition, how did you feel about getting fourth? Well, still, like, it is so, like, undescribably amazing that we got that far. Though I'm a little disappointed that we couldn't at least make it closer to the finals. But it's, it, it was still great. But how do you feel being on drive team? Well, uh, it's very interesting, considering this is my very first year doing this, and completely unexpecting what I was doing until I got there. Like, it, it was very uh, out-of-the-box experience, for because I've never done anything like this before. Do you have any things you think we should modify or fix before states? Honestly... I can't really speak for the other parts of the team, but for us in media, we've been doing the best we can to try and keep up with everything that we need to do, which is very stressful when you've been doing stuff for the, by yourself for the past few weeks. So, but what about you? Because you're on build. Well, not from the build perspective, but from the uh, human player perspective, I would say, like, I need to pay attention more on certain things which would help with my hand signals so I guess getting better with the hand signals to making sure we're like grabbing the pieces properly would probably help tremendously but other than that I feel like our team is doing very good on a lot of the other things